my Father in heaven, I come to you as your servant and your son. I come also as the chief of sinners, dear God. Not Paul, I. But Father, your mercy is so vast, it can reach the chief of sinners. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm alive because of your mercy. My senses work because of your mercy. I walk in my own strength because of your mercy. I enjoy sanity, dear God, because of your mercy. You're very nice to me, and I thank you for that. Where I've offended you today, even though the day is young, forgive me. That's why Christ died, to make forgiveness possible. Now, Father, as I stand at this desk, sacred desk, to do a spiritual work, I am dirt, clay, dust. Help me, dear God. Grant me your spirit that he may literally speak through me. Let me simply be a loudspeaker in your hands. Let my voice be the voice of Christ. Let the passion with which I speak be the love of Christ. And Father, let your all-conquering creative word reach every listening heart, dear Father. Please, God, hear this humble prayer. For your glory and for our blessing, I offer it in Jesus' name. Let God's people say with me, Amen. And amen. What's our subject? Another eye, another apple. Genesis 1, reading from verse 1. We read from the King James Version of the Bible. Genesis 1, reading from verse 1. Are we streaming live? Yes or no? Are we? Live stream? Then let me welcome those of you who have joined us via the internet. We welcome your presence, though you may be far away by thousands of miles, through the agency of God's Spirit, we can be united as one. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you'll be blessed as we in this building will be blessed. What book did I say? What chapter? Reading from what verse? Read verse 1 without looking. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2 without looking. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3, without looking. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Stop. Listen again. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. All right. But let's cut down to five words. Let Four words. Let there be light. Four words. Reflect on those four words, then answer this question for me. Do those four words constitute a request? No. All right. Do they constitute an invitation? No. Do they constitute what? A command. Listen again. Let there be light was a command. Now listen to a verse you know very well. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Yes, Psalm 33, 6. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Now if let there be light was a command. Let me see how deeply you're thinking. If that was a command. And Psalm 33, 6 says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. How else could you read Psalm 33, 6? By the, com who said that? I like you. By the command of the Lord were the heavens made. Is that biblical, biblically correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, for he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Creation was by command. But you say to me, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. All right, well, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We read verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, our subject, another eye, another apple. 20 minutes after 12. 
Yes. Good man. Do you have 2 Corinthians 4? Now find the books of the Bible much more quickly than this. Much more. Are you with me? This is a Seventh-day Adventist gathering. You must be fast. No more than 10 seconds. And that's a lot. Read with me. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Stop. Paul interpreting Genesis 1-3 says, When the Creator said, Let there be light, He issued a command. Go to verse 6. And God of Genesis 1, I'm sorry. Verse 6 of Genesis 1. Another eye, another apple. Do you have verse 6, Genesis 1? Read with me. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water. Stop. What was that? A command. Go to verse 11. Verse 9. Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. What was that? A command. When Jesus, in the storm on the Sea of Galilee, said, Peace be still, what was that? A command. What did the waves do? They quieted down. Follow me closely. Creation was by command. Go to verse 14, verse 11, sorry. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. What was that? A command. Verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. What was that? A command. Go to verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. What was that? A command. Are we all together? Go to verse 24. Read it with me. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. What was that? A command. Read verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image. Was mankind made by command? An intelligent young lady in the front shook her head and said yes. Now if God leads me, I'll deal with that before the weekend ends. Mankind was made by command. Follow me again. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Another eye, another apple. 1225. 2 Peter, you have five seconds left. Two, one. Reading from verse 5 of 2 Peter 3. By the way, which of you can recite Genesis to Revelation, the books of the Bible, in order? Raise your hand. Come. Come, my sister, come. Can someone put life in this microphone? No life in it yet. Or this one? No, oh, it's alive. What's your name? Madison. Shake my hand, you'll go to heaven. Madison, nice to see you. How old are you? Ten. Ten is a good age. You know Jesus was ten. He was a good boy. Are you a good girl? Say yes. All right, all right. <laughs> Genesis or Revelation? Genesis. Genesis, Exodus, Phidigus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai. Zechariah, Zechariah, Malachi, oh. and then Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, First and Second Thessalonians, Tim First and Second Titus or Timothy, Timothy. Uh -huh. Titus, Philemon, Philemon, oh. 
Hebrews. Hebrews, James, and John. First Peter, Second Peter. Second Peter, First Peter, Second, second Peter, Peter, First and Second, second Third John, and Jude, Jude, and Revelation. Say amen. amen. Thank you, Sister Madison. God bless you. Thank you very much. Where are you from, Madison? Virginia is a good place. Thank you, Sister Madison. <laughs> Virginia. All right. What verse were we about to read? Second Peter chapter 3. What verse? 5. Read with me. For this they willingly are ignorant of. That by what? The word of God. Translate that differently. The command of God. Come on. The heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Go to verse 7. Read it. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, come on, by that. Give me a better translation. By that, same command are kept in store. The word that creates. Who can finish my thoughts? Is the word that maintains. You missed it. It's my fault. Listen again. When God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, Genesis 1.14, he made the sun, the moon, and stars. He set them on a course. They maintain that course by the same word that put them on that course. Now, is that clear? The word that creates is the word that maintains. Go to Hebrews 1. Another eye. Another apple. Hebrews 1. Let's read from verse 1. Ten seconds are up. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Keep reading. Go on. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Read verse 3 now. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, nice and slow, and upholding all things, how? By the word of his power. How did he make all things? By the word. How does he uphold all things? By the word. Let's go to Colossians 1. Remember favor number three, what's that? Come on, too slow, what's that? Think, reason. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. What book did I say? What chapter, what verse? 16. Read with me, are you there? Well, you can answer the preacher, are you there? Read with me. For by him were all things created. Stop. When you hear the word thing, do you think of people? No. We think of a microphone, a desk, a phone, a shoe, a sock, a car, a house. Things suggest to us non-human. All right. Let's read. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Tell me some things in heaven. Stars, go on. Angels. Are angels living beings? Yes, you didn't say that with much confidence. What do you think they are? They are living beings. But what does the Bible call them? Things. For by him were all things created. Where? In heaven and in earth. Keep reading. Visible and invisible. Now, pay attention. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Listen to the Bible. For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against What does that refer to? The spiritual beings that fell from heaven. Mm -hmm. Of course, before they fell, they were good spirit principalities and powers. Are you with me? When the Bible says all things were made by God, Christ to be precise, things include intelligent beings. 
Let's go to Psalm 148. We read from verse 1. Six seconds left. Five. Four. And I'm counting slowly. Three. Two. Who has it? Come on. Ah, bless you, sister. All right. Let's read Psalm 40, 148, reading from verse 1. I want the ladies to read. Ladies, are you ready? Well, you didn't answer me. Let the men read. Men, are you ready? Read with me, man. What does it say? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Stop. Go to verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Finish the verse. For he commanded. Finish it. And they were created. What was made by command? The angels. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 38, paragraph 3. What book did I say? What page? What paragraph? Christ was the Son of God. He was one with him before the angels were called into existence. Now, for he hath made him a little lower than the angels. They were just called into existence. Mankind was called out of dirt by the command word of God. I know you're saying he used his hands. It's very romantic, very poetic. Listen to this Bible verse. You know it? Say it with me. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, come on, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Think, the dead in Christ go how far back? To Adam and Eve. Now, if any dead people are dirt, it must be Adam and Eve. If you're with me, say amen. Now, Listen again, for the, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Now the shout means the voice. The voice of the archangel, the voice. The trump of God, the voice. And the dead, which means when Christ comes, he says something. Are you with me? What happened to the dead in Christ? From what? Dirt. Does Christ touch the earth when he comes? Does he touch the mud and the dust? No. But what happens? People come up. They come up by command. When he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Where was Lazarus? Where was Christ? Why did Martha not want the stone rolled away? She said, Lord, by this time, he stinketh, meaning what? He had begun to go back to dust. So when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, he called him from a condition of return to dust. And Jesus never touched him or touched the dust. And Lazarus came out. Why am I stressing this? The command of God is life. Now, you don't keep the commandments to be saved. Don't misunderstand me. But the law of God is life. Now, Patriots and Prophets, page 49, paragraph 2. Mm-hmm. Ah, what a handsome man you are. God bless you. Teachers love sharp students, year one. God placed man under law as an indispensable condition of his very existence. Now, there is a difference between existence and life. This is existing. What Ellen White is saying, even to exist, you must come under law. Where are the physicists? They went to another camp meeting. 
Ah, we have a physicist, distinguished physicist, Nobel Prize winner. All right. Are there laws that govern solids? Are there laws that govern gas? Are there laws that govern liquids? Yes. Everything that exists, which we call matter, comes under law or command. You heat a gas. What does the command say? Expand. What does the gas do? Expand. Everything is under law or command. Which means remove command and there's instant deterioration and a vanishing of all that God has made. The universe cannot exist without command. Law. Now, solid, liquid, and gas are not moral entities. They're just physical. They are come under law. But we were made in the image of God. The image is not physical. It is moral. But I said everything comes under law. The image in which we are made is guided by law. What's that law? The Ten Commandments. Not Newton's laws of motion. The Ten Commandments guide moral behavior. Scientists always say this thing behaves a certain way and that thing behaves and this substance behaves and this liquid behaves. Well, there's a moral behavior in the universe and it is guided by law. That law is the Ten Commandments. Now, one eye, another eye, another apple. Go with me to Proverbs 7. 20 minutes to 1. Is the air conditioning on? Are you ashamed to answer and say no? I don't feel it, but I accept it by faith. Proverbs 7. What verse did I say? I didn't, did I say 1? Okay. Verse 2. I'm enjoying your company. God bless you. God bless you. I mean that. And doubly bless your children. Read with me now. Keep my commandments and live. Stop. <laughs> Give me the negative of that. Disobey and die. Which means the commandments are life. The most vibrant thing you and I can do is obey God. <laughs> Keep my commandments and live. Go, keep your finger on Proverbs 7. Go to Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8, reading from verse 1. Do you have it? Ten seconds are up. Say it with me. What does it say? All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Keep reading. That ye may live. Stop. Stop. That ye may live. The law and life go together for the obedient. Now, Great Controversy, page 467, paragraph 4. Now, don't tell them, don't tell them. The law reveals to man his sins, but provides no remedy. While it promises life to the obedient, it declares that death is the portion of the transgressor. Let me say that again. The law reveals to man his sins, but provides no remedy. The blood of Christ is a remedy, you understand. While it promises life to the obedient, it declares that death is the portion of the ungodly or the disobedient, transgressor. Paul writes in Romans 7.10, and the commandment which was ordained to life. To those who obey, I found to be unto death. Because he disobeyed when he knew no better. God's law is life. And the life in the law is the very life of Christ. 
Now, having said that, let's go back to uh, Proverbs 7, verse 2. We read the entire verse. Keep in mind our subject for this morning. What's our subject? Another eye, another apple. What was our subject last night? Quickly. The apple of his eye. Proverbs 7, 2. What does it say? Keep my commandments and live. Finish the verse. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Ah. Mm -hmm. What is the apple of someone's eye? Something you love. Give me another word. You cherish. Give me another word. It's precious. What did you say? It's what? Faith. Favorite, yes. And my law as the apple of thine eye. In other words... What you mean to me, my law must mean to you. As you are the apple of my eye, let my law, which is life to the obedient, be the apple of your eye. Because the law merely expresses the righteousness of Christ. Keep my commandments and live. And my law Finish it. As the apple of thine eye. My brothers and sisters, listen to these words from a woman I loved or love. Look forward to meeting her in the kingdom. Take one guess what her name is. Ellen White. How many of you love her writings? Can I see your hands? Ah, God bless you. You'll be shocked how many of us have no interest in that woman's writing. Ah, it breaks the heart and that ah, just saps the energy. Faith and Works, page 96, paragraph 3. The reason there are so many spurious conversions in these days, what is a spurious conversion? False. All surface and no substance. Is that there is so low an appreciation of the law of God. Yes, sister. I'll believe in obeying commands. I'll obey yours. I'll say it again. Faith and works. Page 96, paragraph 3. The reason there are so many spurious conversions in these days is because there is so low an appreciation of the love of God. And so we weaken the Sabbath to baptize people who are not fit to be baptized. We weaken all kinds of laws to increase the numbers of converts, forgetting Christ never had the multitude on his side. Evangelism, page 137, paragraph 2, never bring the law down to a low level in order to obtain converts. But seek to bring the sinful and corrupted up to the high standard of the law of God. The same book, Faith and Works. Page 96, paragraph 3 again. The theory of righteousness advocated by many is full of deception because it is flattering or pleasing to the carnal heart. But the kindest thing that can be preached to the sinner is the truth of the binding claims of the law of God. The kindest thing we can preach is that Christ died because he needs his law kept. Great Controversy, page 478, paragraph 3. <laughs> it is only as the law is restored to its rightful position that there can be a revival of primitive godliness among his professed people. Keep my commandments and live. Because it was by command this entire universe came into existence. It is by command the universe is preserved. It is by command living beings were made. It is by command they are preserved. And at the spiritual level, we are preserved by command. When Christ said, thy sins be forgiven, that was not a suggestion. That's a command, the word of command, the word of authority. When God told Gabriel, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision, that was not a suggestion, that was a command. 
another eye, another apple. As we are the apple of God's eye, God tells us, let my law be the apple of your eye. Because my law expresses my and my son's righteousness. This is his life. All that the law encompasses. And all that the law encompasses is eternity. Because no one can fully exhaust the righteousness of God. That is why the Bible says that that commandment is exceeding broad. And so today, I appeal to you as God's people who love God, who love the word. Let God write his law on your heart. I sent out a message on Twitter. The law written on the heart is an act of grace. You know, people always separate law and grace. One of the greatest expressions of grace other than Christ on that cross is God writing the law in the heart. Because you can't write it, nor can I. Nor do we want to write it. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. So God writes the law after we've yielded to his spirit's conviction. It's an act of grace that God would put into the heart of a man who naturally hates the law because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. The natural condition of a sinner is to hate God because he has a law. What can God do about that? He writes the law in the heart where the enmity comes from. The enmity goes and the love for God comes. You see, when Adam sinned, he went anti-God and he supported Satan. And so the very first promise of the Bible, what is it? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. God said, no, I'll put hatred in your heart for the things of Satan. Because because of sin, you were born with enmity for the things of me. Are you following me? I will put my law in your heart. It's the law in the heart that creates enmity for the things of Satan. Keep my commandments and live. Finish the verse. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Another eye, another apple. As we are precious to God, let his law be precious to us. How many will say, Lord, give me love for that law of righteousness. Can I see your right hand? Give me love. Stand up with me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, dear God. Your word is really sweet when we study carefully. We thank you, of course, for the instruction of your spirit because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Please, God, we know there's a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit, but we ask you for more grace We ask you, God, remember the very first promise of the Bible. Every day, Father, put within us enmity for the things of Satan. To reverse that, I could have said, love for the things of heaven. Let let it be said of us, Father, as you said of Jesus, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. No one who does not hate sin can enter the pearly gates. Father, By the work of your spirit, let your law be the apple of our eye. Because your law expresses the righteousness of Christ. As Paul wrote in Romans 8, 4, that the righteousness of the law, that is the righteousness of Christ. Write it on our hearts, dear God, and let us cherish it as the apple of our eye. 